the thing that, that uh, one gun or pistol shooters don't understand about three gun is is how like difficult it is to manage all your equipment throughout the day. Like it's you don't bring a duffel bag to a safe table and that's all you do until the end of the day. Right? There's a lot there's there's choke changing, there's shotgun preloading, there's candy caning, there's like slug and buck and there's two different types of rifle ammo a lot of the time. Um, there could even be different types of pistol ammo if you like got a hot load for spinners, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you, turning different got, dots on and off, and yeah, all kinds. Yeah, of stuff. you got carts, you got like long guns. Where um, as much as we try, you know, there's not always enough space for everyone to get set up at the like prescribed staging area or safety area. So like uh, having a much stricter set of rules on like equipment handling just doesn't work the way that it does in a pistol match. So I, I spoke to Adam about this yesterday and um, like as much as we hate uh, like real safety negligence, um, it's very hard to administer rules in a fair way uh, because like every basically the way the rule book's written now um you know the rule book itself and the list of procedures are roughly like they're well they're very strict they're on the stricter side so like the fault lines of safe tables where you can't handle ammo inside of it you know at this match daniel horner had a mag on the safe table and like was asked to remove it you know like and it wasn't just him like a lot of people make these little uh mistakes that don't matter at all in terms of real safety. And at this match, I think there was a great culture as far as like not uh, going after, not gotcha, uh, you know, anyone for DQs like like that kind of thing. Um, at this match, we were supposed to have chamber flags or locked open actions uh, on long guns, carried muzzle vertical to and from the stages. Plenty of people brought open or brought their gun up with. Uh, with actions closed, right? Like, we didn't DQ for that. Um, a lot of, uh, the, yeah, a lot of these, like, procedural um, requirements were not followed. Uh, and what I saw was, that, like, the staff patting themselves on the back for having, like, um, basically the, the way that they worded it was any DQ that happens on the clock is on the shooter, and any DQ that happens off the clock is on us for not, you know, providing enough guidance and structure, uh, or you know, areas like like uh, they had gated staging areas for shotgun and handling the equipment that you need to here, which I thought was good, but it it wasn't enough, especially on our stage. Like most of the stages didn't even have tables on; it was just like some some uh, like event ticketing, you know, queuing gate, like this metal gate that was like separating the area. So, um, and everyone was. Uh, was patting himself on the back for, for being like, you know, we did our job. We, we didn't have, and I don't, I want to say any DQs off the clock. And it was like, that's, that's just because you didn't prescribe or, or you didn't follow the prescribed procedures. Like you didn't penalize anyone for the things that you said that they had to follow. Um, which is that the right thing to do? In my opinion, it was like, I, I don't think that people should be DQ'd for, for any of this, uh, like ridiculous, not real safety, you know, just failing to follow procedures when it's difficult to know what to do. When, when I roll up the entire gated area is full of bags and I put my cart here and then like play with my, with my gun on the other side of the gate or like one foot's in one foot's out of a stage of a safe table. And I holster my handgun. Like, are you kidding me? Or or you have like shotgun shells on your belt and you're handling your, your right. pistol in the uh, safe area. It's like, well, technically that's not, it's not kosher, but we all know that that's okay. Yeah, so th there's there's a bunch of things that you can do. Um, and uh, I talked to Adam, like we came up with two solutions that, that make sense really, which is, and they probably both have to happen at the same time, which one of them is really looking at the wording of the rule book and rewriting some of these stricter uh, paragraphs and, and phrases in the scope or through the lens of multi-gunners understanding like how much equipment there is to police and manage and what needs to be able to be done in order to give the competitor 
the room that they need to prepare. Um, so that's one way that might might get relatively messy because it's really hard to to write like you know you have liability and everything like what you're just going to allow people to flag each other no obviously not but like was there some of that that went on yeah and when when a uh, a gun is chamber flagged and it and someone is like obviously trying to do the right thing um but maybe they didn't move their cart you know 4 yards to the berm like in my opinion some kind of warning system this is something i'm struggling with with in pcsl also um like I, I hate just giving up and saying, like, you know, it's three gun. Like, it happens all the time. You know, uh, you can't prevent everyone from flagging each other, which is obviously true, but well, I don't know. I, I think that I think that's a defeatist sort of thing of, like, oh, yeah, you can't prevent people from pointing their guns at each other. Well, like, we should try. It doesn't mean we shouldn't try, you know? It's like we should ostracize those who do point guns at us and perhaps ask them not to come back. Like, I, I firmly believe that. Yeah, and there's, said, there's like, a huge difference between the guy who's, like, doing that accidentally because there's, you know, no room and isn't sure muzzle yeah. up or muzzle down. Like, set it, can I set my gun down here? My, you know, I'm waiting for the stage to be reset. My uh, my guns are getting heavy. Um, versus the guy who just doesn't really care about doing it. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, it, it's flagged. Who cares? Like, I can point my gun at you. Yeah. You know, like, and, that and, kind of attitude. And it's flagged. Who cares? Uh, that's one of the reasons I, uh, one of the many reasons I don't like chamber flags. You know, um, another reason, like you can't preload your shotgun when it's chamber flagged. It's just not possible. It's not physically mm-hmm. fucking possible. So that seems like a, a silly thing to put in the rules. And that to me is, you know, it's it's like the the PCC thing um, of the unlo- unload show clear. It's like okay, well now you gotta like eject your round out. Cool. Now drop the bolt. Oh, cool. Now turn the safety off and pull the trigger. Okay. And then now pull the bolt back again and put in that chamber flag. It's like, okay, well, why did we do the clear the thing? If we're going to put the thing in and you know, it, to me, those are things, those are rules are written by pistol shooters who are afraid of long guns and don't b- want to bother to learn. Um, right. And last, last year at the Jeff Kirkwell Memorial match, Jake Martins was there to, you know, see what the culture was like at, um, at the, uh, um, the shooting range and then talk to some people about possibly putting on, uh, nationals, which happened. Um, and he shot the match. And one of the things that he said before, you know, when I saw him was, um, we'll see how many guns I get pointed at me this weekend. And he said it in kind of like a joshing tone, but it's like, there's, there's still that hint of, you know, pistol shooter, um, like that's just what three gunners do, right? They point guns mm-hmm. at each other and you know, I don't know what else what other uh slurs there are, but they point guns at each other. That's not a thing. It's not okay to point guns at each other. There's no other match you can go to in a country except maybe the old Rocky Mountain. I have no idea. They did some weird shit. And uh possibly Blue Ridge. They also did some weird shit. There's no other match you can go to in the country where it would be okay to point a gun at someone. Like that's that's not that's not the culture. So if, if you primarily shoot pistol matches and you think that's culture from multi-gun, that's not the culture. It's not okay to point guns at each other. And if it happens, something needs to be done. But I, like I hear that's the, the primary thing I hear from every other person and, or excuse me, every other uh, USPSA pistol shooter specialty person, right? Is yeah, you guys are unsafe. You point guns at each other. No, no, we don't. That's not okay. The people that I run with and the people that I shoot with and the people that are on this podcast here um, as guests, nobody likes guns point, getting pointed at them. Nobody puts up with that. So uh, I don't know where that came from. Maybe it was, you know, something that was okay in the past in, you know, Soldier of Fortune, that type of thing. Or maybe that's that where the, the whole USPSA pistol versus three gunners thing came from. I have no idea. But it's, it's like it's 2023, man. We got to get over that. It's not a thing. And I, I didn't really like see solid blatant minutes. examples of it like that. Like, yeah, just the the guy who's you know arrogant about it and just doesn't care. You don't really see that very often. What, what what you see is more like people trying to follow the rules and and just you know, like a, a an example is okay. We have a dump barrel. Your gun goes muzzle down in it. Um, I, I was an RO clearing the guns on on the stage with the rooftop. So I had two guns, two long guns to clear right by the rooftop, and then you shot pistol downrange. Um, right after, so I'm clearing them 
into the ground in the dump barrel as people are resetting. Uh, and then sometimes I would take them and hold them muzzled down like by the stocks, bring them over to the staging area for people to collect later. Um, sometimes the competitor would get back and uh, and they would take them. I, I would just say, yeah, just hold my stock, muzzle down, take them over there because um, we have like people downrange resetting. There was no berm, no obvious place to uh, to go muzzle up, right? But it, like someone is just going to come up and say, oh, I thought you wanted to muzzle up. So like they pick their gun up and flip it around, technically maybe flagging someone downrange, but they like, they look, you know, they're like 30 yards sound range resetting a popper and they do it, you know, 10 degrees offset and it's like not flagging. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like I saw that you were, you were safe and you didn't point at anyone. Like you were in the trees, not at that guy. But, uh, like that's one of those areas where like, Hey, we probably should look at this and make a procedure that, uh, doesn't just look past this happening all the time because, um, that's just like, people are going to get complacent and on a stage where there are people all around you, it's going to start happening all the time. And that's um, a good point. The dump barrels. Um, i I have a way easier time with them at two gun matches because it's usually only one of them and I can put it in a place that's like, uh, and I will change stage designs to do this, like put it against the side of a course against the berm. Um, so that there's really none of that that can happen. Like there's no reason for anyone to be in front of it. Um, but that obviously isn't going to happen all the time. So um, one thing that I've been playing around with just as an idea in my head is, is like a, a yellow card, red card system um, or some kind of warning system that is like, uh, it's like, hey, you're a step closer to a DQ. And I'm not saying this would be for, for the example I just gave, but just in general, like it could be... Um, you know, reports of like some unsportsmanlike conduct. It could be like uh, suspected cheating that's not like um, that obvious. Like uh, I don't know, maybe maybe something like you know, hey, like why did you remove your ear pro there? Like act like you got bumped and then it came off and like you got a, you're trying to get a reshoot or like moving toward an RO very quickly to try and get interference um, where it's like it's un you know unclear what really happened. Um, those are just some examples of it, but uh, I'd like to flesh that out more. And um, I'm probably going to give that a try at some point within PCSL. Um, I think maybe that's something to look at, like a, some kind of safety warning system um, where it's like, hey, I, I see what you were doing there. This is the correct procedure. We just need you to like, go into the berm and do this um, instead of what you just did. Uh, and like nothing's gonna happen now, but like watch out for that for next time. Um, yeah, that that seems that seems very reasonable. I'm trying to trying to figure out like if there's a problem with that, but it just it seems reasonable. It seems like uh, it's good for both the match and the competitor, right? You correct the activity um, by giving a you know a warning, and is this are you thinking like it's cumulative, like three strikes you're out kind of thing, or that, like next time we see that. it, it's, yeah. you're done or yeah it could be like two you know two for the same thing uh mm. in a row is like yeah is is a dq where like originally one one would be a match dq yeah but now we're, like you get a chance like there's a lot I, I just i like being able to uh like use discretion as an md instead of follow a strict rule book like when when there's obviously some gray area here and, and you know if i see someone's not obviously trying to be negligent mm -hmm. and just made a mistake with, with um, what they were doing. Yeah. Cause intent does matter. Right. As, as much as, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I feel, I feel like everybody at the end of the day, maybe, maybe it's not everybody, maybe it's 51% of the people, but most people want to do the right thing and you just got to give them the opportunity to do that right thing. And I think that's one of the things that, this year's multi-gun nationals did pretty well in spite of the, um, the improvements that you that you suggest there, um, as a competitor, uh, I, I liked the, the roped or I guess gated off areas. So I knew where I could go. Yeah. I knew I could just place my bag into a berm. I will admit that the very first stage, there wasn't like a, like you said, like a, a table or a place to put my guns. And I was kind of confused. Cause I was like, okay, this seems like a trap. Like, 
I'm definitely being set up here, but, uh, but the ROs, RO staff, you know, told us like, no, just point your guns in the berms. It was like, okay, well, if I preload my shotgun, can I just put it back in the, in the bag? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. As long as it's chambered or whatever, uh, like you mentioned. And then that's what I did for the rest of the match. So, um, I found the same thing at, at two gun nationals last year, or was it two gun nationals? I think that's what it was called. Um, at cameo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Like, um, the first stage I was really worried about where to put my PCC. Like I'd heard all the horror stories from when USPSA was in Vegas and people getting DQ'd for looking at their dots and stuff. Um, and what I found by actually going to the match was much different. It was much, uh, more relaxed and they gave, they gave you opportunities to do the right thing, which I think is very important is, you know, if you don't want that behavior, you got to give people a really easy way to do the right behavior. Yeah, I think I think they were close to doing it well at this match, but the the lack of tables and places to to operate, uh, like uh, a, a lot of these gated areas were relatively small and just had the slant box for like a bunch of long guns in a row with no table to work work uh, with your stuff on. So like, uh, if you wanted to, you know, unbag a handgun, holster it, like or holster it, attach the holster with the handgun in it like mess with your rifle if you needed to do any admin stuff on your rifle, like you're kind of left to go to the safety table where like one or two guys can use it at a time. Um, I like, why are we, why are we still on this? It's like the berms are there to, to be safe and stop bullets. Like berms are there as a backstop, just put tables against the berm and you can put boundaries on it if you want, but say like, here, this is your staging area. You can do this, 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 and this here. And anything you need to do, you're just not loading your guns. Here's an exception over here. This is your shotgun preload table. They're going to stay over here. Or you just do it all in the same area. But, like, especially in a multi-gun match, like, having to... You can unbag your rifle here, but then you have to go two yards to your left to, to unbag your handgun. Yeah. Like, what the hell are we doing? Like, it, this is not that complicated. So, like, if if the number one thing I want to see, like, addressed in, in rules is the stage points being able to... being set more intelligently. Like, number two is is, like, fix this ridiculous long gun equipment procedure just give people a ton of space the berm behind the, the shooting area is where you can work face into the berm and do whatever you need okay you're not allowed to load guns there here's where you preload a shotgun it can be separate and gated and denoted and everywhere else you know we're going to put tables up against the berm and then that's good um, i'd be down for that it's like it's not it's not any different or less safe than what happened at this match mm-hmm. okay like you had people doing that all the time outside of the gated areas because they were full like I didn't see up that. to the berm right next to the, yeah i saw that a bunch. well you saw you <laughs> so. saw many more squads than i did i saw my own squad yeah. so um yeah your experience obviously is different than mine but i didn't see it on our squad uh people doing that um but i mean you're you're right as far as like you have to do your pistol over here it's the one thing that has its own little table but from a you know, three gunner perspective, like we're used to working <laughs> off the ground <laughs> out of our bags, yeah. you know, like to have a table where you can set stuff is a luxury that we, we normally don't have. So maybe it's a, um, maybe it's a cultural thing, right? Cause it, the match is run by three gunners. And so maybe that's not something that they had, um, thought as a requirement is like big tables. So that's an easy improvement though. I feel like I, if any match needs that, like it, multi-gun nationals should have it, you know.